Okay, so for our last talk in this uh, session before lunch, we're bringing some gas chromatography back into the into the program. And so our speaker is Georgia Picaro talking about coupling LC with uh, GCGC. Thank you, Dwight. So I thought I informed that the pointer is that, so I put this here just in case I need it. Is it that perfect? So good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I wish to thank the organizing committee to invite me to present uh, our research here today. So I move from a multidimensional LC to a different marriage coupling the liquid chromatography with uh, uh, gas chromatography. But let me start first with a, a brief historical overview of how the comprehensive, the multidimensional, actually the entire chromatographic community has been moving over uh, the years uh, towards the common goal to enhance the separation power of our systems. So since the beginning, at the beginning of uh, the past centuries and the introduction of the main two chromatography that we are discussing during these days, uh, uh, we have seen a constant uh, uh, attempt to increase the separation power. So just after the introduction of GC was clear that we had the power and the potentiality to increase even more the separation power. And I didn't put there all the milestone like the introduction of the capillary column, but we started shortly after with the herd cutting uh, uh, GC. And back in 1978, uh, there was the first uh, attempt to do comprehensive liquid chromatography. All of us know that in 1991, GC by GC was, was also introduced. And all uh, these powerful techniques has found a rather uh, rapid uh, diffusion into the chromatographic community, as we can see from the increment, the constant increment over the years of the publication involving the use of these techniques. But it's my personal opinion that there is another technique that has always been there that has been a bit neglected uh, by the chromatographic community and is, of course, the marriage of the LC with the GC. As you can see, it was like a background noise back then, but it never really started to grow as it deserved. And it's also rather old, we may say, because the first uh, coupling of LC with GC was published in uh, 1980 by Majors. Uh, and in that publication, uh, he used a modified syringe uh, to transfer the eluent uh, from the LC into a split. Uh, injector in the GC. But it was clear straight away that if we can only transfer a small amount of the LC eluent into the GC, it's not really useful. So shortly after, we had the first large volume introduction of the LC eluent into the GC. Uh, this was published by uh, the group of uh, uh, Grubb. And let me acknowledge him because it has been really the driving force over the first year of the technique to push the development of this marriage. And also the development of this technique is really tightly connected with the cumbersome issue of mineral oil contamination in food. And still today we're talking about uh, this marriage and is what I will present later on. Uh, but also in this marriage, there was the attempt to move towards a comprehensive uh, coupling of the technique. The first attempt was published in 2000 using again a drop interface. So just a tiny amount of the LC eluent was transferring to the GC. And again, uh, it was clear that we need to transfer much more. And so uh, in 2004, uh, there was this very nice publication by Hans Bird here sitting in the, in the audience uh, that used a PTB to transfer larger amount of LC eluent into the GC to characterize edible oil in the different fractions. And of course, the PTB gives us the flexibility uh, to transfer whatever we need. Like we can split or we can use the splitless mode. So we can tune the amount that we are transferring, avoiding uh, overloading of the GC system. But actually the comprehensive coupling hasn't found really uh, a full application. And we had the second, uh, second dimension in the second dimension, let's say, so a third dimension on the GC side. And in 2005, 
again, uh, Hans Georg Janssen was the author of this publication, we had the, the coupling of the LC with the comprehensive GC in, a, in the attempt of explaining the complex uh, uh, samples that are all around us. And in this publication, again, a PTB interface was used and a diesel sample was characterizing, separating the different fraction of saturated uh, hydrocarbons, monoaromatics uh, and de-aromatics and transferring them into the uh, GC system. So the real part of this uh, system of the coupling of LCGC is the interface. And uh, I was shocked when I prepared this slide and I realized that the date back 10 years ago, uh, but so uh, uh, 10 years ago, we, uh, we show that PTV or the on-column uh, interface can actually perform the same. And this was done on the characterization of mineral oils back to the region to show that we can have comparable results. But actually, it really depends on your specific application because back then we were focusing on the fraction uh, between the C10 and the C35, uh, which is the fraction of mineral oil that can uh, uh, migrate into food coming from recycled plastics. But now we know that uh, mineral oil has a much more broadened range of uh, volatility. And uh, uh, since then, all the requirement in the characterization of the mineral oil contamination has changed. And now we, we are required to characterize between the C10 to the C50. And so in this case, the PTB interface actually fail because it's very difficult to optimize it without uh, having any discrimination of the fraction that we are transferring. In fact, beyond the C35, we start to have a decrease of uh, the concentration of our compounds. So we need to go back to the on-column interface uh, to meet the requirement of the European Union, uh, the opinion of the EFSA and the JRC guidance that were published uh, regarding the field of mineral oil characterization, where they ask us to uh, characterize the C10, C50 uh, fraction. So, of course, the on-column interface came back uh, to the game. And we had a mm, brilliant method that was optimized for the routine uh, analysis of mineral oil, again by Biederman and Grob. Um, using a, a very wide separation in the LC dimension to separate the MOSH and the MOA from the bulk of the matrix and transferring it into the GC through an on-column interface that allow to avoid any kind of discrimination. And I won't go into details about the mechanism here. But it's evident that still we do not have the separation power needed to understand what is behind this unresolved complex mixer that we call hump in jargon. And so GCGC came into play because we need to understand what, his, what, what we have in there, what is behind this, uh, uh, this hump. And so also the institution required for confirmation using uh, uh, GCGC. And it's here that we start to work uh, on the coupling uh, of the routine method with the confirmatory method in a unique platform, completely automating, uh, having the first separation in LC to separate the MOSH and the MOA, transferring it through a non-column interface into two parallel GC by GC, one connected to the SID and the other one connected to NMS. Uh, so in this way, the goal has been to respond to the requirement of the EFSA and then the European Union to improve the analytical method, to provide a better characterization of these contaminants, uh, to feed the toxicological evaluation that is still uh, lacking. We are actually looking forward for, uh, to the new publication of EFSA that should be published very soon. But still, even uh, many years after, and despite uh, the very advanced chromatographic techniques uh, that we are using, there are still doubts on uh, uh, the reliability of the data that we are providing uh, on mineral oil. And there are three main variables that are playing on the uncertainty of these results. The sample preparation, the data interpretation, and the data integration. And uh, differently from other uh, contaminants analysis, uh, in this case, as it has been uh, estimated uh, that data interpretation and data integration alone 
accounts for about 20, 30 percent of the total variability of the results that we obtain. On top, of course, of the sample preparation that, as you know, is one of the main uncertain, if I can say like this, step in the analytical uh, flowchart. So when we develop uh, this platform, uh, it appears straight away evident that we have to also modify the software as despite the enhanced separation power that we gain, uh, we still were not able to have a uh, full separation of the different uh, uh, peaks present uh, in the unresolved complex mixture. And so we had to change the algorithm uh, to be able to quantify the contamination coming from MOSH and MOA. And uh, so we develop uh, a software uh, that we call Trimming the Hedgehog. This in collaboration with LICO. And if you want more details uh, on how this works, I uh, direct you towards uh, the uh, publication. But since then, we did an important step forward because, as you know, for the acceptance of any new technology, you need to prove that it is reliable and so to validate. And so we have been working in the last couple of years in validating this platform. First of all, providing that is giving the result expected by most of the laboratory. So that is comparable with the routine method. So we take advantage of a couple of interlaboratory collaborative trials organized in the last couple of years. The first one was this one from the uh, JRC uh, that aimed to uh, validate the, uh, the analytical platform. So without any sample preparation using a, a pure uh, mineral oil. So we provide the results uh, in 1D following the SOP. And on the side, we also did all the analysis with our uh, three-dimensional platform. And as you can see, uh, here is how uh, we perform compared to all the other labs that participate to uh, these uh, interlaboratory trials. Uh, and the JRC fixed some criteria that needs to be met by whoever want to do this analysis in terms of recovery and repeatability just of the analytical platform. And if you can see here how spread are all the laboratory is not an easy uh, target uh, to reach. But we perform very well within uh, the, uh, the required uh, performance there. We also move beyond the, uh, the single uh, analytical platform and we also participate in some ring tests, uh, well, interlaborative trials more than ring tests for uh, the sample preparation part and uh, um, in particular, uh, two, one, uh, four, uh, one organized by the DGF to improve the uh, official method for edible uh, oil characterization, uh, and one organized by the JRC for the analysis of mineral oil in infant formula. So these are the uh, Turing tests, and here you can see with the green spots how we perform compared to all the laboratories. So we were always in good agreement uh, with the outcome of uh, uh, these collaborative trials. And if you want more details uh, on this work, I invite you to, um, to go to the poster of Gregory Bowen's poster number 02 uh, to discuss further about these results. But what we can do with this platform? So the LC, the main role of LC here is uh, to perform a sample preparation. So can we also play on the third variable that is affecting the reliability of mineral oil? So the sample preparation. As you can see from this slide, uh, that is a decision tree reported in the JRC guidance for the analysis of mineral oil. Also, deciding how to proceed for this analysis is not easy. They provide this uh, decision tree and you need to decide when to apply an auxiliary uh, procedure to purify your sample or not. And so you need a degree of interpretation of what to do. And one of the uh, key points is apply or not apply epoxidation which is a sample uh, preparation step that allow to remove the natural interference uh, present in our matrix that actually affect uh, the quantification of uh, uh, the MOA fraction, which is the most toxic uh, fraction of the mineral oil contamination. But this uh, procedure, oxidation, which is very effective in removing the interference, is actually also epoxiding the MOA fraction. And so we need to pay back uh, a loss in, uh, uh, in MOA 
that has been estimated about 20, 30 percent of uh, loss, which is a huge uh, uh, loss of MOA, which is the toxic uh, fraction of interest uh, in this contaminants pharma. So what we observe without epoxide and epoxiding in these samples, we, we spike with a serial of benzoipyrene and alkylated benzoipyrene, is that if we perform epoxidation, uh, the main fraction that we are losing uh, is actually the most toxic one, so the one that is with three and more aromatic strings. So already looking at this chromatogram, you can see that if we use uh, GC by GC, we may avoid epoxidation because all the interference are down here. But this is true if we can focus only on the three and more rings. If we need also to quantify the one and two rings more, all the interference are within uh, this fraction. So we need to find another alternative to replace epoxidation, which is not uh, a reliable procedure. So here are some uh, really preliminary results that I wish to share with you. Uh, we are trying to find an alternative playing on the selectivity, selectivity of the LC in this case. So we create uh, an ad hoc uh, solution containing different uh, um, pHs, uh, more the, the shell uh, solution that was provided for the uh, interlaboratory trials of the JRC and added gas oil. And we add uh, the most common interferences like squalene, lycopene, carotene, atacariophylline, and so on. And here is the results that we have when we analyze the more. If we look only at the interference, here is how they look like. They are overloaded, clearly. But this is the case when we are dealing with real sample in most of the case. They are overloading our chromatogram and we need to get rid of them. So just playing with dilution uh, using uh, a silica column, we have been able to separate uh, the one two ring fraction, which is uh, under discussion if it's toxic or not, from the three and more rings without having any interference. So just playing on the selectivity of the LC, we we open, we are rather confident that we can uh, replace uh, the epoxidation step, uh, making the analysis much more uh, reliable. And well, we calculate in this case a very good recovery of our MOA fraction uh, being around 100%. But that's not all because LCGC uh, and all the development that follow has been driven by the mineral oil topic mainly. But the potentiality of this technique are, can go far beyond the, uh, only the analysis of mineral oil. And we have just done some trials, not even uh, optimizing properly the method. But if we talk about plastic pyrolysis oil, we can separate the saturated and mono, um, mono -sat unsaturated fraction from the poly unsaturated and the aromatic one. And so we can better and easily characterize the polyolefin, for instance, that are present uh, in that fraction. And again, uh, we will soon also translate other methods that involve a silica fractionation, such as this one for minor components uh, in, uh, in lipids. They can be very easily translated into the LCGCGC uh, platform, automating the entire uh, process. And so where are we going uh, with the development of multidimensional techniques? We, uh, we to presented today an LC with a parallel GC by GC and a parallel uh, detection. We know that there's a lot of discussion uh, regarding GC by GC by GC. Maybe we will soon talk about LC by LC by GC by GC, who knows? I think that this is a perfect venue to discuss actually the marriage between liquid chromatography and GC. And I think that uh, PH and Kate were very wise when they extend uh, uh, the chair of this uh, workshop to, to Dwight as well. And so what we can say for sure, I think we will keep seeing uh, this uh, progression on the diffusion of the uh, multidimensional techniques. I really hope that LCGC and LCGCGC can be there as well, because I think there's uh, the automation and the skill out there to handle also this kind of platform. And so it's just up to us uh, to keep developing this. 
With this, I wish to thank uh, all the sponsors that uh, uh, support us daily, my research group that without them uh, uh, I couldn't present anything today, of course, and also it's thanks to them that uh, last uh, September we organized a successful workshop and thanks to them we can reorganize it this year in June 28 and 29 of uh, June. Please save the date. The goal is to uh, put together the two communities, the chromatographic community on one side and the sample preparation one on the other side in advanced in separation sites. So uh, more information will come up soon, but what I can guarantee you is a great scientific program and I can anticipate some of the keynote speakers that already confirmed their presence at the workshop. Uh, so please consider to join us in, uh, uh, in June. And finally, thank you for your attention.